and welcome to your second favourite form of late night entertainment, Maxim TV. Second favourite form of entertainment? Mm. Is that the sex joke? No, I was thinking Xbox, but that's a good point actually. Yeah. Drinking my stepdad's caravan park is probably better than this. Sorry to hear that. Sex, Xbox, caravan park. Yeah. Let's give it another go. Welcome to Maxim TV, your fourth favourite form of late night entertainment. Perfect! Here's what's coming up on the show. Our resident Ryan getting bashed by a woman. Ricky Lee reviews and Guy Pearce. We love hearing from you and all your internet gold, so keep it coming through to Maxim at maxim.com.au. Yes, we copped some amazing mail this week. Yeah, Lana scored several wedding proposals and only several of them were from convicted felons. It's white collar, so it's okay. Not too bad at all, but chances are if you're watching this show, like Lana and myself, you don't know very much about marriage. In fact, the idea of it may even make you feel sick. See, that's why the internet is so great, because it can show us what weddings shouldn't look like. <laughs> Now, a big thing about weddings and, and what makes them count is the wedding photos. Yeah, they're a vital thing to send your friends and family so they can remember the night, because chances are they're too drunk to themselves. And in this photo in particular, like, I mean, it's great that Cupid's arrow has found you in true love away. It's... But showing it off so literally makes an otherwise beautiful woman seem as though she's fallen in a creek on the set of a cheap Robin Hood remake. Now, you may be a horse lover, and horse lovers are fine. But a lot of work went into inventing Photoshop, not to create the things that nightmares are made of. It's the wedding that didn't stop the nation. But the Photoshop abuse doesn't stop there. This next one could be the worst wedding photo ever. Or the only recorded sighting of a man who married a toy he found in a kinder surprise. Smile for the camera or I'll eat you. With that sort of power play request in the wedding pictures, I can only imagine the happiest of equal marriages to follow. But let's be honest, no one really cares for the third, fourth, or the fifth wedding photos. Unless it's with a sweet gilf like this guy. What are you smuggling, g -par? Two budgies? He's been eating so much Iron Man food, he's starting to go rusty. And most of all, regardless of age, no one wants to see a topless photo of the groom. No, we are clearly joking. That guy is never getting married. And neither are most of us. True. That's Max and Mail. Now, there are always cracking comps in the Maxim magazine. Yeah, but none perhaps better than our winner date with Renee Summerfield comp. Oh, Renee, she's been on many covers, and the guy that's won the competition, it's actually his first date. This is true, so I thought I'd sneak along and try and help him out wherever I could. Let's have a look when a guy's first date is a Maxim model and has Curly as a wingman. Renee Summerfield is a 24-year-old Sydney-born Maxim cover girl, model and now actor, as proven in a soon-to-screen scene in Dwayne Johnson's aviation action flick, San Andreas. Little is known about mystery man Mel Borney and Rio Bond, other than the following is footage of his first ever date. Check it out, I'm here with Rio. He has won a date with Renee Summerfield. Very exciting, a beautiful Maxim cover girl. Are you nervous? I, I am, I am. I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm excited as well. Hey, mate, I've got a couple of things for you, because I yep. want you to have a big one. Yep. Um, I'll give you a little bit of just cologne on the wrists. Well, yeah, okay. Another good trick is to uh, drop a catchphrase in there, so you, you feel like you're more familiar to the woman than you actually are. So okay. something like, uh, I'm trying to think, maybe wowee. Wowee! Yes, okay. this is good. So you sprinkle that in there, and that's a recipe for a great time, which will hopefully end in uh, needing one of these. Back pocket. Uh, yeah, no, Don't drop no. it on the ground. She'll think you're a creep. No. Next up, mate, I'm going to be there with you because it's a big. This is your first date, isn't it? It's the first. Yeah, date yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's my very first date. So. This is incredible. All right, yeah. let me uh, let me put this in your ear. Okay. I'll be there, covering you back the whole time, Rio. It's going to be the best first date known to man. Okay. All right, mate. Go get ready. She's being there in about five minutes. Uh, no worries, thanks, mate. All right, mate. Good luck. <laughs> Hey! Hi! How are you? Good, nice to see you. Nice to see are you ready? You. Yeah, I'm keen, I'm excited, I'm keen as a bee. You're a fan of iPhone as well? iPhone, yeah, oh my god, I'm so getting the 6 Plus. I know, me too. I'm so getting it. I saw that because it's 5.5 inch screen, I'm getting it definitely. How, how big? 5.6? 5.5 inch. The iPhone 6 is 4.7. So, Renee, is your head a thief? Is your dad a thief? Is my dad a thief? Yep. I don't think so. Did he stole the stars from the sky and put them in your eyes? Thanks. Is your dad a terrorist? Is your dad a terrorist? Because you're the bomb. How long have you been modeling for? Um, I've been modeling all my life since I was a kid. Wowee! Wowee! What's your favorite type of car? Probably a... Holden Commodore station wagon. Wowee! 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 Rhea! Rhea! 
He's going it alone. What a legend. So I bet you travel a lot. I was in Thailand for Sheridan's wedding. Oh yeah, um, saw that. A couple months ago. Yeah. That was awesome. That was pretty cool. Is that in Thailand? In, in uh, Thailand? Every two meters, we'd have someone in our face saying ping pong. What does that mean? Ping pong shows. Okay. I hated seeing like the elephants like chained to the ground. Right. Yeah. That was just so bad. Like animal rights. Yeah. What's your favorite color? Blue. Same. So, so Renee, you want to come for a ride with me? Are you scared? So scared. Oh, you'll be fine. Deal with me. I'll look after you, Renee. Same with me, Renee. That lamb made me so full. This view is almost as beautiful as you, Renee. Thanks for you. So, so did you have fun today? I did. I fun. Did you have fun? Yes, thank you so much for coming. That's alright. Thanks for hanging out with me That's today. That's okay. Sorry. Bye. Bye. Nice to meet you. Rio, mate, that was incredible. How'd it feel? Relieved, actually, mate. Yeah, yes, I can imagine. I can yeah. imagine, mate, that was sensational. You threw the earpiece out, yeah. you went at your own, you had a laughing, yeah. you're holding hands. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's go grab a beer, eh? Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, Find please. you another one. Yeah, Day number two could be tonight. Yeah. Still to come on the show, Curly messes with Guy Pierce over a drink. We'll give you the lowdown on the women you'll meet. And this guy gets beaten up by yet another woman. That's all coming up on Maxim TV. Introducing the Cougar. You definitely look younger than your profile pic. Where you'll meet cheap student nights, the supermarket, in the car park after footy training, swingers clubs. Wow. You have great arms. Oh, darling, they're real. And they're fantastic. The pros. Well maintained and enthusiastic, has a lot of bedroom know how. Getting in her will may mean a lucrative payday. YOLO! That means you only live once. The cons. Lack of common interests. Loose, morally, financially. Overuse of kill terms. <laughs> oh, we're going to have some fun, you and me. Mm. Overall, a walk of shame gains new meaning when you lock eyes with a cougar's kid on the way out. Plus, once dragged into the den, you may not escape for days and leaves a drained, hickey, broken little man-child. I'm going to do everything to you tonight that I never did to the father of my children before he left for the divorce. Top up? If I had a dollar for every one of them, I'd date it. You'd have 30 cents. That is true. UFC. Now, a lot of you may think it stands for Ultimate Fighting Champion, but in this next story, it may as well stand for Unfit Ooh, what they beep that? I'm not sure. I just said Unfit Character. Yep, this is where we check in with our lovable plus-size friend Garfield and his ongoing quest to lose weight. And this week's mission, we sent him to the UFC Octagon to take on MMA champion Arlene angus Blinkow, and she was given one instruction only. Hurt the It's time for Max and Fitness. Hi there, I'm Arlene angus Blenko, and today I'll be putting Garfield through some MMA moves here in UFC Gym Sydney. Please don't hurt me. Just a one, two, hands back to your face. That's it. Okay, just a straight right, power punch. Left punch. Right kick. It already hurts, just her practicing is already bad. Do we take you up to the next level? Sure. How much higher do we have to go? Head kick. <laughs> Seven, nine, ten. Alright, nice work. Nice. Okay, the next drill we're going to do is a forward roll. Shoulder down. Four. 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 We're all warmed up now. Ready to spar? You're going to get your mat. I'm really scared. Oh. Oh. That's a bad idea. That's a really bad idea. Ow. Oh. 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 Oh.
Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Good luck. Well done. Good work. I'm thinking a few more lessons before the UFC. Well done today. Thanks. Oh. All right, nice cool. That was a mean hit. Oh. When it comes to fashion though, the glue store really do help us out. Yeah, not just financially in exchange for promoting their national retail offering, but also in the variety of stores that we lift things from every week. <laughs> New outfit? Yeah, I'll probably only wear it once. <laughs> but seriously, we love the guys at Glue Store and this week Curly got to catch up with them to talk about an awkward staple, denim. Check it out, we are here at the Denham store in Sydney. It's not Ned Kelly, it is a denim expert. Kyle, good to meet you, mate. Pleasure to meet you, thanks for coming. Loving the beard, loving this, loving that, loving all of this, but talk us through denim. What's the go with denim at the moment? Definitely in 2014, it's, it's um, raw denim. So they're the harder, sort of uh, darker pairs. That's yeah. the ones. I had all this talk about denim, I want to get involved. Should we uh, start off with a bit of a stiff one? Let's do it. Hmm. All right, Kyle, I'm experiencing some lower body happiness here. What is uh, what is going on? What am I in? So what I've got you in is our seven point uh, raw Japanese selvage slim tapered fit. And what's the deal with, with raw denim? Obviously it's the raw estate that it comes out from the factory. Yeah, so uh, and it's quite stiff. It allows for a more unique fit. Uh, you get your own personal fades and wears over time. Yeah. So what's the go? A lot of people say you shouldn't wash your jeans anymore. A bit of advice uh, you've given me today as well. Don't wash your jeans. Any pair of jeans, raw, distressed, you yeah. need to uh, go as long as necessary before you actually wash them. Yeah, nice. So yours, yours, yours about six months old? These are a six month old pair. Um, still haven't had their first wash coming along nicely. And you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. All right, brand new pair. These ones aren't brand new at all. About uh, a three-year-old look. So what I've got you in now is uh, what we call a Category 5. So, so you've got a standard pocket and uh, something special with the fly there? Yeah, so one-piece button fly. It's one piece of denim. Unrippable. Unrippable for emergencies. Straight for the deviants out there. Okay, Kyle, some people say it's a fashion crime, the double denim, the Canadian tuxedo. But uh, we're pulling it off. Double denim is something that can be done easily. As long yeah. as the tones are bright, you're not mixing and matching too much denim. If you're going to go for a raw double denim look, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's nice just to break it up with a white t-shirt, something really yeah. simple, a jacket, or even a button-up just open over the top. I'm getting a bit of a feel for this uh, Canadian tuxedo stuff, the double denim. I might go and road test this uh, bad boy right now. Well, denim are the experts on denim. I still thought I'd double check with the people and see how much double denim is too much denim for any given day. So how much uh, denim is too much denim in your books? Uh, yeah, one... Either pants or top, that's enough. Mate, how much denim is too much denim? Well, it works for you, man. What are your thoughts on denim? I love it. I don't know if I'd go double denim, but you're pulling it off. I'm quadrupling. I notice we're twinsies. We're matching. You can never wear too much denim. I agree with you, but I'm getting close. I'm sort of outnumbering you by two items. Can you handle this much denim? No, I wouldn't wear that much denim. Let's have a bit of a chat to people about denim. What's your name? Josh. Josh, what's going on, Josh? I mean, I'm just quite busy. I'm looking for my friend. You don't look too busy, mate. You're walking around whistling. What, what's your favourite staple of denim? A pair of jeans. I'll go with denim jeans, yeah. Some darker coloured jeans. A nice pair of denim jeans as well, most. Yeah. What would you rate my outfit out of uh, out of ten? Maybe an eight. An eight? Yeah. I'll give you a nine. Yeah, I'll give it an eight or a nine. I'll give it like a seven, dude. <laughs> I'll give you an eight. Eight, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. I'll give you a six. Now, I'll give you a nine, mate. That is great, uh, great get up. That's Thank four. You. Four levels of denim. What about now? Still too much. Still too much. We should, should we part ways? Uh, I'm going this way. Thank you. Next up, Curly has a drink with an Aussie legend. I've got a weird memory condition, so I can't always remember uh, what's going on. What are we doing right now? I have no idea. We're drinking. I know we're drinking. Um, we're chatting. Cheap reference memento, great film. No memory of what you're talking about. I've never seen it. So awkward. It's really awkward. James Curly, nice to meet you. Yeah, God, yes, how do you do? Welcome back to Maxim TV. So Curly, this week you got to catch up with Guy Pearce, how was it? Oh, it was incredible. I mean, for someone who's had a massive Hollywood career, he was a very down-to-earth, cool, humble kind of guy, and just, yeah, it was great to have a drink with him. Wow, sounds like you want to marry him. Let's check it out. Check it out, I'm here with Aussie legend Guy Pearce. Cheers, mate, thanks Cheers, for having me with us. No worries, it's nice to talk to you. Sorry that I'm not having a beer as such. Oh, I was going to ask, you're not a, not a beer drinker? It's never been my, uh, it's never been my thing. Is, is wine your drink of choice? Look, it's either wine or vodka, pretty much, yeah. or champagne. Not always separate? Pour them in together, that's right, absolutely. <laughs> what was the last big night you had? We just finished a film in Japan uh, with Kristen Stewart and Nicholas Holt called Equals. So we had a wrap party. And you have to have a drink with most of the crew, so you probably that's where you get your, you clock a few of the drinks up, don't you? I just like to say I have to have a drink with most of the crew. I think I moved from wine to vodka and back to wine again. Yeah, the old seesaw. A little bit, just seeing, seeing which way is smart. Yeah, great move. <laughs> Mixing drinks, we like <laughs> totally. it. What about the next day? Any hangover cures? You've got a, a surefire recipe? I actually find if you can manage it, 
some sort of exercise in the morning where you sweat it out of your system. It is the best, isn't it? It helps. Yeah. Now, uh, music, you're getting stuck into some music. Of course, Broken Bones coming out November uh, 7. Talk us through that. Has it been a, obviously a, a lifelong passion, the music? Or? Yeah, I've always, I've always made music, really. I mean, I, even as a kid, um, I was always playing music at school and, you know, I was kind of in school plays and I was in theatre companies and I was singing in the choir and playing saxophone in the school jazz band and doing a bunch of different things and the acting career sort of just took off. Any money that I earned from any jobs I was buying recording equipment with and slowly building a big, bigger and better studio at home. So I've always, it's like I've had a music career without any of the music actually ever getting out. What about career-wise, the, uh, the biggest lesson you've learnt? One of the things a as an actor that I'm, that I'm constantly trying to sort of work on is what's the least amount that I can do as an actor on screen to actually elicit the greatest response. It's a fairly Australian approach to work. What's the least I can do? Well, that's right. Have you had any uh, shocking moments where you've, you've, you've stuffed up in a big, you know, <laughs> film sort of environment? Funnily enough, on the movie I just did in Japan, working with Nicholas Holt, he was playing a character called Silas and I was playing a character called Jonas and for some reason the names just would not stick in my head and I'd be calling him my name and... Yeah, right. So it, it happens, it happens all the time. Maybe it's too much of this. It could, could well be. Who knows? What about uh, women? What's the, uh, the biggest thing you've learned about women over the years? Well, it's a, it's a complex question really, but I think ultimately to listen to them. I think one of the mistakes that guys make a lot is to project stuff onto a woman. So I do think that sometimes it's just about listening and hearing something and if I can help, I will, but don't go, oh, well, maybe if you try this, if you do this, you know, and she's going, shut up, <laughs> just hear me out, you know. Now, I'm sure a lot of uh, Australian men of all ages have looked up to you over the years. Is there someone you've looked up to throughout your career or in the last few years or in your lifetime? There's been a variety of different actors, I guess. Um, you know, for me, Al Pacino and Edward Norton, Gary Oldman, these kind of guys that, that I just think do really remarkable work that you can't quite pinpoint you can't quite it's, it's a bit intangible you know yeah. what's uh, what would be your career highlight look meeting certain actors is always you know an amazing an amazing thing um, in what sense well just just getting well getting to work with certain actors i remember working with kevin on la confidential and standing there we had a scene together you know where we get kind of personal about why you became cops etc and i was standing there watching going i've got like a front row seat here of this amazing performance but i think on a on a film level um I mean, Iron Man was a bit of a highlight, and actually Prometheus was a highlight, so working with Ridley. And uh, what would you say to your 18-year-old self if you had one piece of advice? I was pretty anxious in those days. Were you a bit of a nervous, uh, nervous teenager? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think I'd do a bit of work on trying to you know, calm myself down, really. I wasn't yeah. hyper, I wasn't hyperactive, just but I was, just, I was socially excruciatingly shy. And the work that I've done on myself over the last 10 years in sort of being able to you know, deal with people better, uh, I would have liked to have got it sorted out a bit sooner in life. And finally, uh, obviously, a, a bit of music coming up in a rider, the rock star dream uh, about to happen. What three things would you love to have in your rider? Uh, definitely some drink of some sort, you know, to, to relax the nerves. Um, and a lot of chocolate. Obviously, here in Australia, it would be just good old Australian Cadbury chocolate. Yeah, can't beat it. And probably one of my dogs. To have one of my dogs uh, there with me in the, in the dressing room, I think. I can't, too, can't get too, down those dogs. You know, precious the request. It's not quite, too, quite not too crazy, no. Yeah. Well, cheers. Thanks for having a beer with us. Listen, no worries. Looking I forward to uh, more music and more movies and more, more Guy Pearce. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Maxim loves you. How's it feel? You're all sweaty. I like it. You're a bit tense. Well, Maxim loves you. Beautiful hair. Do you use Pantene? Maxim loves you. I feel good. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Shoulders. Oh, you got big shoulders. Do you want a massage? Don't make us chase you. Maxim loves you. You're getting a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot to work with here. I can feel the tension. I can feel it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. That's nothing. Can I just uh, have a picture? Alright, thank you so much. Ah, free hugs for people who would probably happily pay for them. Now it's time for Max and Reviews. Now first up, Lance, we've got a bit of a DVD. We do. Little Tommy Cruz is back fighting aliens in Edge of Tomorrow, where he plays a military media officer forced into combat. Things go seriously Groundhog Day when Tom discovers that every time he's killed, he wakes up and has to do it all over again. Luckily, Emily Blunt is on hand to help train him and look hot. 
We are giving Edge of Tomorrow four Scientologists out of five. Now, Lance, a bit of a gaming review. If you're a fan of EA soccer game FIFA, you probably already know that the next instalment is about to hit shops. With amazing digital recreations of stadiums and a mind-blowing array of players, plus realistic commentary and improved ball play, this one will have you glued to the couch until FIFA 16. We're giving FIFA 15 four dramatically diving Italian strikers out of five. Next up, Barnsley's touring his back. Yes, the complete and utter Aussie legend hits the road this month, touring his greatest hits, 30 years after going solo. Last month, Barnsley scored his 10th solo number one album with 30-30 Hindsight, proving Aussies just can't get enough of the screaming Scotsman. We're giving Barnsley's 30-30 Hindsight to up four working class men out of five. But sadly, it's time for Maxim TV to come to a close, but we'll leave you with the Aussie goddess, Ricky Lee. Ah, remember where it all started on Australian Idol for her? What's an Australian Idol? Oh dear. We'll see you next week on Maxim TV. See you later, I said characters. She did. Enjoy. Oh, the shoot has been amazing. It's been so much fun with all the military costuming and the props and the hats and the bullet belts and the grenades and all the khaki. And I've, I've had so much fun. It's been it's been a really great day. And I, you know, it's, it, I felt quite empowered and strong. And it's it's really nice to see you know the photos coming out looking fantastic.